can I just start off the video by saying you guys were 100% correct in predicting Lapu Lapu coming to Rise of Kingdoms? That's right. A couple of days ago, I made a video kind of predicting the three new commanders coming to Rise of Kingdoms. And I think the first two were pretty obvious. And coming to the conclusion that Lapu Lapu was the third of the three was done in part with the help of those of you that commented on my original video. And you guys were 100% right. Here we have Lapu Lapu is 100% confirmed coming to Rise of Kingdoms. And we're going to go over kind of the truth about Lapu Lapu today we're gonna go over what what you need to know who should be maxing out this commander maybe one additional use for Lapu Lapu that people might not have considered so far and of course if you want to stay up to date with apparently all of my accurate predictions and the breaking news for rise of kingdoms go ahead and subscribe to the channel about 69 percent of you guys are not subscribed okay first of all let's quickly go over what exactly Lapu Lapu is doing now I know I'm I'm a bit late to the party here I didn't think rise of kingdom guys you can't be dropping commander skills on Valentine's Day bro like come on what about come on man what what is that anyway this is the first time that we've ever seen a leadership garrison and skill commander in rise of kingdoms which is super interesting and the active skill has a rage cost of a thousand it says that he will deal direct damage to up to five targets with a two thousand damage factor that is of course reduced by 15 percent for each additional target and if the current target of this commander's troop is a rallied army it takes an extra 300 damage factor now this has the exact same wording as heraclius which means this is probably a circular aoe and i know a video on ihara's channel one of the youtube short that they posted showed the active skill animation for this commander being a circle I'm not going to show that here because I don't know where that video came from but I'm like 99% sure that this is a circular AoE okay so we have a 2000 damage factor five target circular AoE this is actually one of the best circular aoe's in the entire game like this is objectively when it comes to raw skill damage this is actually insane i think we can't brush off the fact that like this is the same skill damage as juge leong right like now juge leong has a debuff on his active skill but like this is actually a lot of skill damage for a circular aoe commander taking a look at the second skill it says this commander gains 20 percent attack and their troop deals 10 percent more skill damage when attacking rallied armies okay so this is really important if this is a garrison commander which he is is going to be in the garrison most of the time and 20 percent attack is kind of it's fine but it's it's nothing like super special looking at the third skill it says if this commander troop contains at least three different unit types it gains 10 percent defense and 10 percent health if this commander is serving as a garrison commander the garrison takes five percent less damage and if it's your own city you take an extra five percent less damage for a total of 10 percent damage taken reduction so again very small amount of stats here i would have much rather gotten like 20 percent health 10 percent defense 10 percent attack something like that but it is what it is it's a small amount of health and uh you know this is gonna be really good for garrisoning your own city fourth skill says whenever this commander troop uses an active skill if you are a stronghold garrison you gain 10 percent bonus damage for three seconds if you are a city garrison you gain 20 percent bonus damage for three seconds there is no listed cooldown here which is actually really nice so it, it may even refresh when you're active for your primary commander uses active skill and then your secondary commander uses an active skill if there's no cooldown here then it's going to pop twice for a total of I think probably five seconds total because I think they'll still be an overlap for one second so yeah that's actually really solid I mean 10 percent less damage for about half the time is like really good especially because you're already taking five percent less total damage here the expertise bumps up the additional skill damage to rallies from 300 to 500 and if you are a city garrison you will disarm the target for one second and for the next three seconds you'll take 10 percent less skill damage now this commander has from what i can tell three uses okay the primary use is going to be defending your city obviously i think that like they've made it very clear they've tried to tune this commander for city defense which makes sense because we saw heraclius come into the game last year around the same time with the same sort of gimmick being mostly a city garrison commander the second role that this commander could play would be as a secondary to a, a regular garrison right i'm really i'm curious to see how he's going to do i think he's going to be a bit more squishy than the heraclius secondary in a garrison but he's definitely going to be dealing way more damage than the heraclius so that's going to be really nice to see i'm curious to see how people are going to do that and what kind of pairs he might pair well with and also how could you possibly use him with Heraclius potentially in a mixed garrison and I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in just a second I don't know if it's going to be like I don't think we're going to see a mixed garrison meta but I think that there could be some kingdoms where they get good use out of that in certain scenarios and then the third use for him that I think could possibly be something someone might try would be in a hyper chaotic scenario where you're swarming a rally right so if somebody is rallying a target and the rally alliance doesn't control the field very well 
then you may be able to get a lot of value out of this aoe because first of all again one of the best aoe's in the game actually and also with the expertise you're dealing an, another 500 damage factor to that rally and 10 percent extra skill damage when swarming that rally right so i, I want to be very clear here like some of these require you be in the garrison but the first skill and second skill they work in the open field if, if you're hitting a rally right so it's not a massive advantage but i think if you are going to try to swarm down a rally with a lot of different armies i think having a labu lapu in there again if the rallied alliance doesn't control the field you might be able to get some nice damage on that rally but also like dealing a lot of just residual aoe damage to people nearby who might be trying to stop you from swarming down that rally just another a little interesting point i'm interested to see how whales actually use this if he makes it into the uh kind of rally swarming lineup maybe he won't right maybe he won't especially because in the field like this last skill doesn't literally do anything right and also a lot of this uh, expertise doesn't do anything because it requires garrison so i think that would be a really niche use for lapu lapu but it could actually be pretty decent now with that being said who should be investing in this commander right first of all if you're going to be chaining barbarians i think he actually could be a pretty good choice because this is again one of the best uh, aoe's in the entire game literally like liu che does more damage but it's not in a circle right Zhuge leong deals the same amount of damage with a debuff so i'd argue that's a little bit better plus i think he has a skill damage a little bit of a skill damage bonus there as well but like lapu lapu is i think top three right which is kind of insane depending on how you calculate why she's 50 skill damage bonus but you get the point really good aoe so if you are going to use him for chaining barbs you don't actually have to max him uh five five one one would be pretty much perfect you don't really need these last skills especially in the open field but i think there are some players who should be maxed him first of all if you are a whale and you like to take city rallies then i think lapu lapu with heraclius is probably the play that's probably your best city garrison i think at this point i mean the synergy there is obvious they are trying to make these commanders synergize perfectly for your city garrison like it doesn't really take that much thought to put into that like that's obviously what they're used for use them for that right and i know a lot of players that are whales sometimes they do get a little bit selfish that maybe they do want to get they want to take that occasional city rally right which i think a lot of kingdoms sort of frown on a little bit because then like because you're kind of just farming kill points for yourself without actually contributing those kill points to like an open field fight but regardless we're not going to talk about the morality of that uh right now in this video but if you are a player who likes to take city rallies this is probably a commander you can consider maxing the other player that could consider maxing lapu lapu uh is if you are in if you're a whale in like a c or d seed kingdom where you don't really have a lot of garrison options I'm curious to know how he and Heraclius could work in a mixed garrison kind of like an oh shit we're near the end of kvk and we can't like fill it with just infantry or just whatever like everyone just fill it with whatever you have whatever you can I think this synergy as a mixed garrison with Heraclius and with Lapu Lapu I think that that actually might work out in those lower seed kingdoms where it might be hard to crack this if it's got really good leadership gear with that whale max tech all that stuff i think it might surprise people and also in the c to d seed kingdoms that's typically where you see those players that don't really know that they shouldn't be standing too close to the flag or the fort or something like that right and that's where you're going to get a lot of value out of this five target circular aoe for those players that are just casually walking by and then boom they get wrecked by a 2k damage factor that could be really interesting and it's also important to note that this active skill is really going to serve as a deterrent for swarms right whether you're defending your city or a flag or something like that hitting five targets swarming you with a 2000 damage factor aoe is really going to hurt and i think that's really important and people probably will think twice before they actually hit this because think about how many garrison commanders have a five target 2000 damage factor aoe there pretty much aren't any right like i mean you've got you know if you ever have liu che in your garrison for whatever reason like sure but that's not a circle right so you could be missing some targets people could just swarm it from like the other side beyond that i've seen people use Zhuge Liang in the garrison which is really that's that's crazy but ysg is actually like the only garrison commander with a circular aoe that is nearly this high and this is even higher than that right now he's missing the skill damage bonus like i said but still it'll definitely at least make people think twice before swarming this down i think some of those low seed kingdoms those whales might get good use out of lapu lapu but i think the main people that are going to be maxing him are going to be those whales that really want to take those city rallies which is kind of unfortunate right because i think lapu lapu again you know there's a lot of filipino players that were really hoping that lapu lapu would come into the game i again made a video like two years ago where i said that we need to lapu lapu we finally have him and i think a lot of players wanted him to be uh sort of like an open field god and i just don't think that that's going to be the case now the other thing that i want to point out is that 
we actually don't know how we get this guy right uh we know three new commanders are coming to the game and last year we saw a wheel a mightiest governor and an event commander and I suspect that'll be the case here as well. I think Lapu Lapu will probably be the mightiest governor commander, but uh, there is no rule saying that he must be right. It is possible that we could see Lapu Lapu come in some other way, right? Like the, the, the devs could literally do whatever they want. I mean, the two ranged commanders could be the wheel of fortune and the mightiest governor, and then Lapu Lapu could come in some other way. I would love to see Lapu Lapu replace Ethel fled in the uh, expedition shop. I've been saying that for years now, I think once you max your Ethel fled and you enter into season of conquest, I think then they should switch it to something else. And uh, I think Lapu Lapu, you know, because he's not going to be like this open field God, but I think all players would like to have at least one decent wall commander, like garrison commander for their own city. I think it'd be cool to get him for free, right? I think it'd be nice to kind of collect him over time. I think, you know, because he's not a player that everyone should be maxing, but a lot of players probably want him just because he's cool, right? I think giving players him for free over time would be really cool. Of course, you know, again, I, I don't think that will be the case. I suspect he will probably be the mightiest governor commander, but anything could happen right anything could happen uh, I hope that we see him in some other capacity but I predict him being mightiest governor guys what do you think about Lapu Lapu I want to hear from you guys in the comment section below and while you're down there make sure to drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton it'll help get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and while you're down there make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell to be notified the next time that we upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace